welcome back to another episode of the Bad Taste Video Podcast. I am Mike. And I am also Mike. We are currently missing Anthony. He had previous engagements. He may show up, he may not, but Mike and I will proceed along. <laughs> yeah, hold it down, hold it down. I mean, is that possible? Can we do this? Yeah, I think it's pretty possible. I'm sure it could happen. <laughs> So uh, we've we've been watching a ton of wrestling for some reason, <laughs> and uh, last the last couple of weeks we've been watching the movie that uh, we were you know we were discussing, and this week we are watching what are we watching? We are watching um, Necropolis. No 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 I'm saying what's on the TV right now? Oh this is Cyber Slam 1997. <laughs> ECW. <laughs> but yes we watch Necropolis this week. Not to be confused with the Return of the Living Dead sequel that really doesn't have anything to do with any of the other movies, really. No, I, not at all. Did we ever? Did, did you ever say if you saw those or not? No, I never saw them. No, yeah, no. they're not worth seeing, man. They're really bad. You know, even like when you go back and you watch a movie like House of the Dead or something, have you ever seen that? No, I haven't seen that no, either. Like, no, like at least it's like sort of entertaining. While that other shit is just fucking boring as hell. Yeah, boring's not good. Un- unwatchable sometimes is better than boring. Boring's <laughs> not good. <laughs> no, it's never good. No, because it's, it's just there. So, Did you think the movie this week was uh, boring? No, I thought this movie was really cool, actually. It grew on you, right? Yeah, I, mean, I didn't really like it initially, but it got better. I liked it. He watched it three times. Yeah, three. it was worth it. It was good. Yeah, so the first time he was like, yeah, I don't know about this. You have to do that sometimes. You got to try things out. And then he watched it again. And then we just watched it uh, before. And he was like, wow, you know what? It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to like. You know what? It really is pretty good. But um, this uh, this movie, I don't know if anybody really even knows that it's like a witch movie, right? Like a witchcraft movie. It's a lot. It's a lot. I got, I got uh, different vibes off it. Like, it's just witches. It's um, obviously Satan stuff. A little bit of a vampire vibe for me. I don't know if that's really tr- accurate, though, but that's yeah. what I got. Well, you brought up a good point that this is uh, two movies in a row. That we have, like, this sort of... Uh, sort of a prequel. Yeah, like, where it's like, oh, I will come back. And they come back. <laughs> good vengeance. And they win. <laughs> yeah, they win. That's always positive where they win. Do you like downer endings? Yes. Yeah, me too. This one does have a very like downer ending. Because it's not utilized enough and it's something that, that could be utilized more because it it sets a different it just changes the whole complexity of a movie when it ends that way. Yeah. Well you always expect it to be like a happy ending. Yeah, your expectations are totally flipped. And when and when, you know, somebody like that character dies or whatever, you're always like, Fuck like you 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 you're left like oh like there's more right like this isn't the end like something happens yeah usually with downer endings there's a real um sense of finality what do they call that in wrestling a false finish <laughs> yeah false finish yeah. <laughs> dusty finish yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. False yeah you ain't getting put over bro nah man sorry brother nah man we'll beat you not, not tonight yeah that don't work for me brother <laughs> we'll beat you halfway on creative that. control <laughs> yeah uh-huh. utilize that card we just watched uh what what the hell is it wrestling with regret this is the youtube channel but uh it was on the baywatch with all like the WCW characters in it, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Considering I never even knew that existed. Yeah, that I'm surprised. I, that me seemed too. like something you would have known. I know me about. Too. Uh, I I knew about that one for some reason. And I didn't know. Maybe I was watching that show on like the USA Network or some shit. No, the TNT. I don't know what the fuck it would have been on. Yeah, it was TNT. Maybe you stumbled across it. I never saw it. Yeah, I don't know. But um, this movie, I do. You know. You ain't stumbling across this on TV. <laughs> no, not a chance. But this also is like one of those, uh, you know, New York retro future, right? Like, would you say it's like a retro future time movie? No, yeah, no. Yeah, it's, like, it's like the kind alternate, of like, f- alternate reality. Post, what do you call it? Post apocalyptic future. I wouldn't say it's post apocalyptic. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe. Um... It's very like early 80s New York because it was filmed there, uh, you know dirty fucking dark 
dangerous. Yeah, when the city was crime a city. Crime everywhere. When the city was the city. When it was alive. <laughs> yeah. When it was an entity. When it had a soul. <laughs> yeah, that type of thing. The black soul yeah. of Manhattan uh-huh, was, and Brooklyn. It was dangerous. And this was also filmed in uh, Jersey City. Yeah, I, I there's thought, some I shots thought, of I that. I thought there was a bit of Jersey City in it. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. which is also like very expensive to live there now too. Mm-hmm. Very nice place though. Well, yeah, it's it's all it's all flipped now. It's all different. It's all one eighty'd. All that shit. Remember when? Remember when our friend's girlfriend was in uh, Jersey City? <laughs> Jer- Jersey City is uh, quite the place. <laughs> it's quite the place over there. Yeah, that's a that's a life changer, man. Yeah. It's a- Good times. Good times. <laughs> but uh, this film was released in the U.S. in May of 1987, and it was released in the U.K. in October uh, of 1986. It's 1986. Sorry, I got a little he- ahead of myself. But uh, actually, it was October 10th of 1986. I wonder why they got this first. Uh, usually, that's the opposite, but they got it first. So technically, it's really... They really should credit it as an 86 movie. But you know? you know what? Like, what's funny is, like, the main character, what's her name, Eva? Um, she, like, fits that very, like, goth-type look of the mid to late 80s, like, when all those, like, Sisters of Mercy-type bands and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, he does have that look. You know, has that, like... <laughs> But uh, this one was, it, like I said, it was filmed uh, in New York City. It was filmed in Jersey City. It was filmed in January of 1986. Um, so they really, they had a pretty good turnaround time for this. Right? Like, would you say? Filming in January. Well, that's how they did Out by October. That's how they did them then. That's actually Rush. They really pushed that out. Oh, hey, you know. That's, you what, gotta, you, that's what you gotta do. You gotta strike when the iron's hot, right? Oh, I, I would say that's so. That's what they have to do. Uh, it had a. Run- I thought this was uh, pretty funny. It had a runtime of an hour and seventeen minutes. Very short movie. I love that. I love short movies like this. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. This movie could have been an hour and a half. You think he, they could have added more to it? It wouldn't have bothered me. It wasn't. It wasn't a drag to get through. Um, much of the musical score is from the movie Trancers, Eliminators, and The Alchemist. So this was a mix and match of other movies' music. And they came out with something really awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was like a greatest hits, uh, greatest hits. That's one of the best parts of the movie. The music, right? Yeah, it's huh. great. Yeah, it's really sick. Like the first song, I guess the theme of it. Yeah, it really sets a great tone for the movie. Oh yeah, super eighties, especially with that motorcycle and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it just screams. Just it's it's really cool. You love that shit. Yeah, man. I'm all about it. I also like really like the tagline of this, beneath the metropolis. And then it had the fucking necropolis. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where they love New York to death. That's awesome. Yeah. This movie, I just love the the atmosphere of this movie is really awesome. I love these types of things. Yeah. Would you say this fits in like that driller killer type thing? Well, not exactly, obviously, with the tone, but like other aspects of it, yeah. Just like the time period, like the 80s in New York. Yeah, that whole 80s feel, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I loved it. Um... This was directed and written by Bruce Hickey, and he didn't really do anything else. He did like a couple small things, but nothing a note. And uh, Eva was played by Leanne Baker, and she was also in Mutant Hunt, uh, Psychos in Love, and Breeders. Have you ever seen any of those? I haven't seen any of those, no. Uh, Mutant Hunt's awesome. You would like that. Same same vibe as this. Okay. A little bit cheesier, though, like more, low, uh, more of a lower budget mm-hmm. type deal. But... um. This oh man, Brian Pillman. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, Brian Pillman just crossed over to ECW in this. I I love ECW, Brian Pillman. What a vest. <laughs> the studded vest. Yeah, great look. Uh well, dude, he would have fit in in this movie. <laughs> with uh with Snake, <laughs> aka been, Little Danzig. He would have been the star of the movie. <laughs> Do you think that uh you were saying before that this movie could use a remake? I wouldn't say it could, but it'd be a concept that'd be cool to do. You know, it'd be cool to make this like a like a retro future type, like Blade Runner esque, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, movie, like updated, make it more in the future, yeah, but have like the same premise, mm-hmm. have it look sort of like Tron, you know what I mean? Yeah, you tweak it a little bit, yeah, that you, would be, you borrow from it, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, it's a cool idea to make. We should do that. We should start a Kickstarter <laughs> and make that movie. No, there's cool elements to make it that way, like a futuristic type thing. Is that how the movie feels? Yeah, it does. Like it has. You know what movie has the same feeling like The Punisher with Dolph Lundgren? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Like it has mm-hmm. that same thing where like it doesn't look like it's the future, but it kind of seems like it is. 
like some shit happen. You know, what, <laughs> you know what helps me make it feel that way is the music. It makes yeah, I feel like it's a type of. Well, it's that uh, real like new wave type, uh-huh. uh, yeah. you know, all synthesizer type music, mm-hmm. and it's it's all driving like. Uh, yeah. I like that shit. It's yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the bass lines, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just sometimes all the slow beat shit, you get over it at some point. Like, you like to switch it up, oh, especially if a shit like this. Oh, of course. Like, these types of movies, like, you'd love that type of music in it. It's like a real driving force in the movie. Yeah. As, even if, like you said, there's the one corny part where she's dancing and everything, like, it's still, like, the music that's playing in it is awesome. Yeah, the music's cool. This and it, like, it's... counteracts, like, the corniness. Yeah. The music you want to really, dance. Like, I did. But yeah, yeah, I, I saw you. But I wanted to. But the, mu- the music was really good, though. No, no, definitely. I definitely uh, would. <laughs> I'm definitely going to download some of the songs from this onto my uh, onto my phone so I can listen to it. <laughs> but, uh, Mike, would you like to actually get into the movie? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, let's do it. Now it's a 300-year-old witch. Her soul has been reincarnated. It could be a man, a woman. Who knows? You said it was a woman. We can come back as different sexes. One lifetime, I was an English slave trader. The next life, I came back as a slave. And I've been a woman many times. I know I've never been no woman. Maybe, maybe not. You believe all this? Yes. Well, I knew the first moment that we met that we'd known each other before. There's more. People tend to incarnate in groups. I may have known you, I don't know. But if what I surmise is true, we're all in a lot of danger. So, Mike, let's uh, let's take this back. Let's go all the way back to 1686 to New Amsterdam, the southern tip of Manhattan. Where you say the southern tip of Manhattan? Wow. Who knew that? We see a man walking through the woods following a woman with white hair. She kind of looks like Storm. <laughs> I'm not sure Lady Gaga. Yeah, okay. yeah, well, either way. As this is going on, we see a young woman and man getting married. And uh, we see robed people with candles enter this, like, smoky cave, right? This, like, super over-the-top spooky entrance. Yeah, it looks like this crypt that was once a club or, or a <laughs> club, something like that. Inside a black mass or ritual is going on and the woman with the white hair is apparently like the leader of this cult. And uh the music in this is fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> this is like where we start getting like a taste of it. Um we get a dance sort of like in Night of the Demons. Um you know the dance I'm talking about uh-huh, that yeah. Angela does. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, this is very similar, and uh, you get nudity immediately in the movie. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, good start. <laughs> so uh, it cuts to Dawn and William getting married, and while like they're saying their vows, you get like an, I guess like an overdub of Eva, the woman with the white hair, like saying these other like satanic things in its place, right? Mm-hmm. And um, we see, like, her poke a doll with a pin, and Dawn's throat, like, starts bleeding, right? Like, a drop of blood, like, comes out onto her hand. Yeah, it was almost like a voodoo doll. So she, like, immediately freaks out and runs out of this room uh, full of people, and it's nighttime now somehow, right? (laughs) It was, like, daytime this whole time, and then all of a sudden it just... It's night. It's a real abrupt swift. Yeah, for sure. But um, she's uh, when she like runs outside, this guy that was following the woman the whole time was uh, he grabs her and he he's like, oh, you know, take this, take this. You're going to need this. And this is uh, Reverend Henry later on in the movie. So everybody is basically connected to a character that's. You know, in present time. They were mm-hmm. all reincarnated in groups, they said, right? Yeah. AKA, yeah. we can't pay for more actors in this movie. More or less, yeah. That's mm-hmm. a good idea, though. It, it works if you get away with it. So uh, she runs away from this guy, and she's grabbed by one of the uh, the white-haired woman's henchmen. So they have her uh, at this, like, sacrificial altar type thing, and... Eva cuts her throat with a knife. You don't really expect that to happen immediately. No, I wasn't thinking. No, that was she's happen. but she's dead. <laughs> and uh, just as she's like licking or 
kissing the blood coming out of her throat. Uh, she's she gets fucking shot right, and yeah. then like her two goons also get shot by the uh by Billy yeah, or am- William at this point. They get ambushed a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They come in like, yo, fuck you, what's up? But uh, it's it's the guy from the wedding. It's her husband and uh the black guy that was like outside of the window telling her to take the cross, Henry. And uh, they like stab her with a cross that's like sharpened, like almost like a vampire. So this has like a touch of vampire. That's what I got. It vampirism, from. Uh-huh. right? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's got a little bit of everything in it. And she says, "You'll never kill me. I'll walk this earth again and seek my revenge." And then uh, just then, we get a shot of Eva in modern day. Well, modern day when this movie came out, New York. And she's got, like, this red, like, um, Japanese motorcycle, like, you know, that futuristic 80s future Yeah, that totally 80s biker feel from the future. Sort of goth, right? Uh, Yeah, the music leads to that, but it's just everything about it. The wardrobe, the bike, the color of the bike. It's it's really awesome. The music is awesome here. I think it's called Rock and Rock, the song. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. I'll put it it in for us. Okay. But uh, <laughs> she goes to the store and uh, there's like this piece of shit working there. And we we were trying to decide if this guy was in the beginning. We couldn't tell. If you uh, have seen this movie before, please let us know if you think he's a character from the wedding in the beginning. If you have this like on Blu-ray or something, if they made this on Blu-ray. I don't know, did they? I feel that's the only way it makes the story. How, wait, how did you watch this? I saw it on YouTube. Yeah, um, Like, I wonder if there's a Blu-ray to this. I or a better version of this. I didn't check, but I, I feel I feel the way they set the story up that it's the three people from the past. But Yeah. I don't know. I, it could be wrong, but I don't think... I think it's the three people. I don't know. But, um... When she, like, walks, like, you could see her, like, walking in, like, front of the store, and the guy kind of sees her from the back, like, behind the counter, and he takes a hit of his uh, asthma inhaler, <laughs> but uh, she's, she comes in, and she's asking about a ring that she saw in the paper, and the guy's, like, being super skeevy about this, and he's like, oh, like, you in entertainment, like, I can get you uh you know big agent i know people let's he say i'll take you to see frank sinatra big big fan yeah, you know, big friend personal yeah he's trying to be a personal real, friend trying to be a real jersey sleazeball yeah. <laughs> yeah and he achieves that and then he's like oh if like do you want to go out partying like we get yeah. oh like whatever you want like drugs mm-hmm. coke whatever you want uh-huh. no wait <laughs> And well, she's like, not. and she basically tells him, like, yo, dude, shut the fuck up and give me the fucking ring from the newspaper. Give me the fucking devil's ring. Yeah, she totally starts to, like, punk him out. And uh, the guy says, like, oh, well, somebody came in and bought it already. And she wants to know who bought it. And he starts, like, making some shit up. I don't know why he's, like, protecting this guy. Like, Because they're all together. It's because he's with them. He's of the past. Nah, what an asshole. But uh, she starts, like, reading his mind and telling him things like, oh, like, your biggest fear is losing your hearing and this and that. And as she's doing this, like, this high-pitched noise is happening. Almost like a Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, what was that, part five? With the ear? Yeah. That's the Freddy's Dead. Which one is that, six? That's six. And, um... She's like kind of interrogating him, like, like, tell me who the fuck bought it and I'll let you live. Like, I'll stop. This whole thing's going to stop. And uh, eventually, I guess she gets what she wants out of him, right? I couldn't really tell. It kind of like mumbles. Yeah, she gets the information. She, she gets all up in that head. And she kills him. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see like blood coming out of his ears. So I guess she like fucking popped his brain or something. <laughs> this is Which, where this where they got the idea for that uh, new Becky Lynch character from this movie. What? That's, that's where they got it. From. She's, she's Eva. So, uh, so uh, Eva goes to see Reverend Henry, and she acts like she's a runaway, and says like, "Oh, someone is following me." He says he's the devil, and Henry is like, 
oh, like, we'll take care of you. Don't worry. And he starts asking her, like, oh, what's your name? And she says, I don't know, which is pretty funny. Uh, where are your parents? She said she doesn't have any. And if she's using drugs and she says no. Yeah, she, she's lying about all of those. Yeah. Especially the drug use. Well, do we know she's taking drugs? The ectoplasm is drugs? Well, well, not even per se, but the character she's trying to portray is definitely yeah. taking drugs. So uh, he says, like, oh, I know a shelter that you can go to. And she's like, no, why do I have to go there? I want to stay with you. And he tries to give her a cross, and she backs away like she's a vampire. Mm-hmm. Right? Like she, like, gets against the wall. Like, Yeah, she's um, not a dummy. No. So... Uh, she leaves and she's like, Oh, I'll get you motherfucker. <laughs> like a real, like Scooby doo fucking thing. Mm-hmm, Who the fuck yeah. is this on the TV right now? I didn't catch who it was. I didn't see. <laughs> but, um, next we see Eva getting ready in front of this, like Donnie Darko mask in this like shit basement apartment, which is, uh, apparently below the shop that she was just in. I didn't really realize until the, uh, Till Billy goes there <laughs> and investigates later in the movie. But uh, this is where you said she has that. She has like another dancing sequence. And Mike says this was embarrassing. Yeah, this was the worst part of the movie. She dances around the apartment. But uh, for the music is really awesome. Also here. But it just reminds me of like Night of the Living, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. Like his like dance in his room when he's cleaning the room. Yeah, but I, I think that was meant to be kind of dumb. I don't think this was meant to be dumb. You think this was supposed to be like a serious thing? A little thing? bit. No, more serious. More. I don't know. But um, Eva pulls up to the uh, neighborhood center, and we see Dawn now interviewing Henry and a kid named Philly, and he's saying how he was strung out and turning tricks in a very graphic way <laughs> that we're not going to say the same exact words yeah yeah he's, he's, he's really trying to get his point across <laughs> yeah 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 so uh eva is heard saying like kind of overdubbed again um you're cold and he starts shivering and they think that he's having like withdrawal symptoms from heroin <laughs> but uh it's her controlling his mind hey old habits die hard and uh, they they ask him, like, oh, are you, were you using this and that? And Eva also says, like, oh, Henry's trying to just fuck you. And Dawn was laughing at you, making fun of you. And he's, like, freaking out. And this this sequence is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really fucking. <laughs> he's just all... having, like, a nervous breakdown here. She's really fucking with all these people. So Henry brings him to the hospital because apparently he's going to die from these symptoms of whatever's going on. So Eva walks in and um, he she talks to Henry's f- like assistant or friend, whoever this guy is. Assistant. Uh, yeah, Tony. And Eva asks him like, oh, uh, I needed to open up Henry's safe. I need something out of the safe. And he refused to open it. And he uh, he's like, all right, like you got to get the fuck out of here. Like, I don't know who you are. So she walks up to him and she starts saying like some real fucked up shit to her, uh, to him. It's like, oh, like you came so close to killing yourself last time before Henry stopped you. She pulls out a switchblade and says like, oh, it'd be so easy to slit your wrists with this one slice and it would all be over. (laughs) The best scene in the movie. Yeah. And uh, she slams the knife down and says, I want you to do it. And he looks at her like with the knife in his hand. He like he looks really distressed, and he says, "Please help me." And she says, "I am." <laughs> and he proceeds to slit his wrist. This this scene is fucked up. Yeah, this is this, this really, is really like a fucked up scene. It's a really dark scene, and it really, it's definitely the best scene in the movie. Oh, for sure. So Eva goes and uh, she goes to some warehouse. She opens the lock, like, by touching it, and it explodes, like, in this lightning-type thing. Looks like a real, like, wrestling fucking entrance. He's showing off her powers. Yeah. So she goes down to this, like, sub-basement, and it's obviously, uh... She's obviously looking for something. 
And she says this satanic shit like every movie we've watched this month. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got the same old chanting. And tells whatever is down there, like, show yourself. And you see, like, the zombified members of the cult from the 1600s. I thought that was pretty cool. They kind of look like the phantasm dwarves. Yeah, it was a cool reveal. Yeah, they were, I love, like, what would you call, like, Toxic looking monster things. Yeah, they're little like, gremlin. They're, they're like you know sewer dwellers. Yeah, they got that type of look. Like a chud type thing. Yeah, nah, mel- mel- well maybe not so much a chud. The, these guys kind of could have been the incredible mel- melting man's cousin. I like that movie. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, it's a fun. That's a that's a it's real a fun movie. I saw that on a what do you call it? Uh, Monsters HD. Yeah, that's a I that's I highly advise you to uh, see that. <laughs> the Incredible Melting Man. Yeah, it's quite. It's a fun time. I yeah. Like it. So uh, Billy's talking to the Reverend, and the Reverend refuses to believe it was a suicide. And the medical examiner sounds like uh, he sounds like Roger from American Dad. <laughs> you ever see that show? Uh-huh, yeah. He yeah. sounds like the alien. <laughs> I was laughing. He's like, and he keeps saying like, "Oh, Rev, baby." <laughs> I don't know how much I trust this guy. But, no, no, you know. but he is a doctor, man. Mm-hmm. So Billy is the groom from the beginning of the movie. And the Reverend is the guy that was spying on the witch from the outside. And Dawn is the bride from the beginning of the movie. So everybody's from the beginning. And the shopkeeper may have been there, too. Mm-hmm. And the assistant was the like chaplain of the original, like, 1686, 1777 fucking happening. It's all intertwined. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, this has got, like, an Abigail thing. No. (laughs) Conceptual, a little bit. (laughs) So, um, Billy's a detective, and the Reverend said that uh, the kid that was going through withdrawals had no drugs in him. And the Reverend said something like, oh, I have, like, strange vibes about this. And Billy says something to the effect of, uh, you can't, like, arrest strange vibes. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good uh, little interaction. He's right, though. Yeah, no. See, yeah. like, like this guy that plays Billy, like, is a terrible actor. But for some reason, he has, like, little parts that are really good. It's because the lines are good. If it was a better actor, it'd be a lot better. You think that's what it is? That just like the writing was good. That's what I thought. Well, not the writing for the whole movie, but uh, this, this character had some clever shit. I thought he said, but yeah. just, for some reason, it just didn't come out right. So Billy's talking to Dawn, and he asks how he how does she know the Reverend? And she says that she took like a reincarnation seminar with him. And then uh, she, like, asks if Billy believes in reincarnation, and he says he doesn't. And it's like, oh, of course, you know, how convenient. Just like last time in Evil Speak, oh, of course, how convenient you're learning Latin right now. Yeah, well, it just, you know, just happens to be doing these things. Yeah, yeah. That's just like all. Just like how I happen to be taking pictures of pizza on Google to cheat the Domino's. <laughs> yeah. Pizza thing. What is it? The pies for points? Points for pies? Points for pies. Okay, so remember last week, people, Mike was telling us how you could get points for taking pictures of pizzas, right? That you bought. So now, thanks to me being the scumbag that I am, I figured out that if you take a picture of a picture of a pizza on the internet, it'll count. So just take a picture of your computer screen and you'll get the 10 points. So your max allowed 60 points. Uh-huh. You can thank me later when you're eating your free medium pizza from Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome discovery. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty proud of myself. Yeah, it was fun. Do you have another computer or just every week when you come here, you're going to do it? No, you can, you can just go on different computers. You can, you can have a free pizza enough to a day, depending, <laughs> on, the, depending on your source. <laughs> No, 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 no. That doesn't work that way. I don't. Who knows? I don't. I don't get how that works at all. That's like ridiculous. Yeah. So uh, Dawn takes Billy home. Wait. What? Yeah. Dawn takes Billy to her house for a drink, and she says, "Cheers, William." And he says, "Oh, that's an old man's name." He's like, "Wait a second. I, I never told you. Answer. I never told you my fucking name." <laughs> I mean, no, it's not even that. What a dumb answer. 
Hey, no. that's an old man's an name. Old name. What the fuck's the difference? Billy's an old man's name, too. And then uh, what? Dawn asks, oh, like, have we ever met before? And he says, oh, where, the Copa? The Adam's apple? Yeah, yeah the, Copa. Don't even met the Copa. Why does he say it like he's like a fucking, like an asshole? I don't know. Unfortunately, I sound like this. On, I can't help it. He, this guy couldn't that's help just, it. That's just, how like you, that. that's just how you sound, man. Oh, that's that's what, okay. That's what I mean. This guy's trying to sound that way. But uh, she really believes that they've met in a past life. So now Eva's now like watching these two like punk kids. Well, I didn't get one of them's name, but uh, the others is, is Snake. And the only reason I remember that's because of Snake Plissken. But Eva starts huh. saying like, "Oh, like you can't stand this fucking cut." <laughs> yeah, so she uses you. She makes you fucking sick. She, you want me? Brutal. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the guy like leaves the girl. It's like get the fuck out of my face and like walks away from her. But first she goes, oh, let's go home and let's fuck. That was another line that well, she was did, in this interaction. But that chick did kind of look like a lion. I mean, she was, Oh, yeah. She was very aggressive, she, man. She had a big meme and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy leaves his girl and he goes to look for Eva and he finds her. She's just like, oh, you want me. And you'll do anything for me. You want me so bad. You give me. Uh, no, you'd give the devil your soul. And she puts her hand over his head. And the ring that she took from uh, Henry's safe starts to glow. It starts oozing like a clear liquid. This is our first uh, sign of the ectoplasm, right? Yeah, that plasm. It's everywhere. Can't get away from it these, in these things. You can't get away from so it. So Billy goes to Dawn's house, and she's, like, happy to see him. He, like, just stops by randomly. They just want to show, like, their relationship so they can be married again, like in the beginning. <laughs> but uh, the girl punk's now looking for Snake her boyfriend type guy. And she says a really funny line too. I don't even have enough car fare to get back to Queens. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's not because she needs him. I mean, her, her ride. <laughs> was it for that? She wouldn't be talking to him. Dude, this, is that only funny to us because we live here and like we, and that's like something we've heard people say before. It's funny. I feel because we live here, the accents and because it's a stupid scenario. Cause how many people do you know who are in scenarios like that? That's happened to them. Some stupid shit like that. Yeah. They just want to like, be like, fuck, I can't get home. So I guess I'm staying. Yeah. Some shit like that. You know, it's relatable. I guess. Yeah. Oh my, me- I lost my Metro card. Yeah. I can't get back. How am I going to get back to Queens? <laughs> yeah. See, it's, it's relatable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Eva brand snake with a ring with that like fucking pentagram ring. It's not. It's not a very cool looking ring. It's too. It's too big. Did we mention this whole um, movie looks like a wasp music video? Oh no, we should. It definitely does. Uh, yeah, just saying. You know, just if you guys really needed a visual and you've never seen this, yeah, very sleazy. Yeah, it's really good. Um, we love the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love the atmosphere. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm gonna make that a shirt, yeah. like just the text on it. Uh-huh. I'm. I'm here for the I'm atmosphere. Here for the atmosphere. This one. It's, yeah. I'm here for the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just black shirt, white text, right? Yeah. Wear it in a, in a double XL ex, uh, extra long T. No, you gotta wear it as tight as possible. <laughs> Gold foil print. <laughs> yeah. Tight as possible. <laughs> busting out of it. So Dawn and Billy are still talking, and uh, he goes to kiss her neck, and she freaks the fuck out. She says, like, oh, I got this thing about my neck. I've always had it. All these therapists, all these, all this bullshit. Still, I, I got this thing about my neck. And my answer to her would have been, I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> I don't know that. So the other punk girl finds Snake, and just then Eva walks up on her. basically, And, and she like basically tries to tell her that she's a lesbian. Snake never turned her on. She's like, no, you don't, you never liked him. You never liked guys. <laughs> Man, this, this, this is a, she, brutal. Dude, I love these scenes. These things are crazy. Yeah, they're fun. And scenes. the music is awesome in that scene too. Mm-hmm. The music's really good in every scene. Yeah, they whoever like whoever like did you know? I wouldn't say like wrote it because they did not make this music, but whoever can you know make compose this soundtrack is, I you know. Yeah, I like B, it a lot. B plus. It's a good job. Actually, no, this is an A plus. Get the fuck out of here. This it's is fucking sick. A real good job. So uh, Eva's now with her minions. And uh, it turns out that she can grow four more boobs. So uh, they also leak this goo, this ectoplasm goo, and they start eating it like those. Uh, they remember those uh, candy things like in the '90s, the early '90s. It was like in a little tube, and you it would be green or red or blue, 
If you would squeeze it out, it tasted like fucking shit, like you were eating toothpaste. Yeah, uh huh. That's what this reminded me of for some reason. Yeah, it was just like it was just the parasites come to feed. That's what was going on here. I don't know why it had to be breasts, but well, hey. did this outdo uh, what's it called? Total, Total Recall. Re- well, this this is more. I'm not saying no more. this is double the boobs. Yeah, but sometimes that's not necessarily better. You so. don't like this? This was like a real uh, Mortal Kombat looking deal. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mind it, but I, you know what it was? I didn't feel I didn't feel it fit the tone of the movie. Yeah, like it was just randomly. It was, like out, of, it was like out of left field. Like, why why is this here? They just wanted more nudity, so she would like take her top off for the first part. Well, they should just had to be nude then, regular. Yeah. Why why do you got to do that shit? I don't know. But uh, Billy Stupid. and Dawn are at uh they're at the crime scene. And it's the girl from before. And she's got the brand also. And I love the medical examiner. He's like giving it back to him also. Oh, like, don't tell me how to do my job. Yeah, the guy's a little bit of a highlight. Yeah. And uh, Dawn's asking Billy if he thinks that ev- all these like murders are connected. And he keeps putting it off. He's like, no. She wants to ride along with him, which is like crazy to think about. He's like, no fucking way. <laughs> yep, She's to... like, oh, I have friends downtown. Oh, uh, great. And oh. they show him, they show her riding with him the next day. More. It's like, oh, I didn't, you didn't tell me your friends downtown was a fucking mayor. Yeah, well, sometimes you should listen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, <laughs> that was a pretty funny little uh, thing. No, it was a cool Little thing. sequence. It was funny to me. More, more solid police work. Yeah, but uh, we see a bunch of prostitutes now <laughs> talking to their pimp Eddie, steady Eddie. Oh, man, Steady Eddie. Steady Eddie's a real cool guy. And, and we figured out, well, I figured out, I take full credit, Oh, okay. that this movie made the tagline for Field of Dreams multiple years before it came out. Because Steady Eddie says, if you think of them, the tricks will come. Yeah, but but, but Eddie is, is correlating his to, to the horror game. I don't know, yeah. I don't know if it's going to work to the baseball diamond. Uh, I don't know. That's the horror game if I've ever fucking heard of different one. Different type man. of type of different type, different type of horror game. Dude, they love horrors. Baseball players love horrors. No, but I'm just saying in, in the um in, in the whole game would be a little bit different than the baseball field with his terminology. Uh, I don't know. But man. maybe he did. Maybe he did. So Eva shows up and she's threatened by these girls, and uh, a John pulls up, and. They fight a bit, and Eva force pushes one of the girls down like she's a fucking Jedi and gets in the car. Yeah, she's just like showing off now. Yeah. So Billy and Dawn are staking somewhere out or just eating in the car, and they get a call that there's been another murder. So Billy, Dawn, Henry, and the medical examiner are talking, and they're talking about like the ectoplasm. Like, oh, did you ever get it checked out? Did you ever send it to, you know, find out what it is? The medical examiner, like, freaks out, like, tells him, like, mind his own fucking business. And Billy says, Reverend, I want you to tell me, like, everything you know about this. And we get that awesome, like, cut where the next scene is like, well, you told me everything you knew, and this is too much for me to handle. <laughs> but uh, it's the post-conversation about ectoplasm, and uh, we get a- another shot of the of the boobs immediately after they talk about it. And, like, the minions, like, backing away from them. Oh, yeah, the minions. They, they love those that breast milk. <laughs> and uh, Henry, this is kind of the first time, I guess, right, that uh, we start hearing about witches, mm-hmm. right, like in the modern day. And Henry says uh, he thinks that it's a 300-year-old reincarnated witch. So if it's a 300-year-old witch, this would be, like, 1998 but made in 1986. By that timeline, but sick. I love it. I love it. Look how right. we just let's just think about it All like right. that. We'll, we'll That's a real that. Terminator Two type thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Billy still doesn't believe, but uh, Dawn's like a hundred percent all in. So Eva's following Dawn, and the music is awesome again here, and they bump into each other outside of Dawn's apartment. But Eva just like helps her pick up her groceries and lets her go into the apartment. So Eva goes back to the prostitutes and like the head, the head prostitute, the queen prostitute pulls a knife on her, a nice switchblade. And uh, 
She's like, oh, I'm going to fucking stab you, motherfucker. I'm going to kill you. you, you thought You're going to die tonight. You thought Eva was showing off before. Yeah, this is great. Like, the, the prostitute goes to stab her, but nothing happens. No blood, no entry. It's just nothing. And she... Oh, by the way, the prostitute says bitch 13 times in two yeah, minutes of screen time. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. But uh, she burns her hand. She, like, makes the knife hot, I guess, right? Like, instantly. Uh-huh. And Steady Eddie comes over. Uh-huh. And uh, it's like, oh, what's going on here? Oh, she burned my hand. Oh, how'd she do that? I don't know. That bitch the devil. Yeah, that bitch the devil there. And uh, that's the greatest cut right to his car. Yeah. It goes from them saying that to right into his backseat. Yeah, it was such an interesting transition. And like, they're saying like all this bullshit. And he says one of the most romantic lines I've ever heard in my life, Mike. Baby, I'm going to fuck you to death. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just then that she uh, uses the ring on him. That was a bumper sticker. Then, yeah, right? yeah, effectively killing him, and she starts licking the goo off of him. <laughs> yeah, she made quick work of him. So Billy's like, after all this, what do you, what do you, what do you guys think? Do you think he's going to go to the, to the shop that the ring was at? Think she's going to go back there? And they're all like, yeah, you know, that's a possibility. So Billy says he's going to go check out the shop and see what's going on. And um, Billy, they show Billy going in and there's nobody there. And he goes down into the basement where Eva was. And he's like, oh, I could sure use a beer because he saw an empty bottle on the on the, the sink. And he opens up the fridge to find the dead shop worker guy. You see, and, this guy is definitely from the past. Yeah. That, that to me, this really confirmed it. That he's, cause why? Because uh, because why bring him back again? That's true. And uh, Billy just takes the beer out of the fridge and drinks it. He's like, oh, uh-huh. you're not going to be using this anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that was a real class move. So Henry's dropping off Dawn at her apartment, and when she tries to walk into her place, she's attacked by one of these cloaked minion, fucking, sand people. One of Eva's, Jawas. One of Eva's melting men. Yeah, and uh, she runs, she gets away, and Henry goes back to look, and he finds ectoplasm right on the wall or on the doorway. And Henry states that the original ritual must not have been completed, and she's trying to complete it now. So Henry goes back to the youth center. He says he has to get some things to, you know, to get this shit ready. And... One of his, uh, one of his friends, Rose, I think her name was, yeah, her name came Rose. and like speaking to him and like, oh, can I get you anything? And he asked for like, oh, can you get me a cup of coffee? So she agrees, but when she's going to get this, she runs into Eva, and Eva starts saying all this fucked up shit, like, oh, you were better off turning tricks, you were making more money than working in this sweatshop, you know. She sent, he sent your. This like is, this daddy is, this, to jail. This is Eva, the most brutal with this chick. Yeah, like saying terrible shit. Like, oh, you are better off being a fucking drug addict, prostitute, than being like having a nice job and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, encouragement. So she gives her a fucking handgun. <laughs> oh, oh, and she man. says, go back to the office and kill fucking, kill Henry. So she goes back to the office and she's acting super weird. <coughs> and um, Henry... It's like, oh, you could put the coffee down on the table. And she puts the coffee down. And she's still acting really weird. She tries to fight it, though. Yeah, and she says, Henry, I love you. Please forgive me. And she's, uh, she says, Henry, she's making me. She shoots Henry once in the arm. And uh, we hear Eva's voice saying, kill him. Kill him now. And she, uh, she really only shoots him that one time because she turns the gun on herself. Right? Mm -hmm. And shoots herself. She fought it. It's a really powerful scene, actually. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Damn, man. That was rough. Yeah. So, Billy... Because she, like, really tried to fight it, and she just... She couldn't do it. She couldn't. But she didn't kill the other dude. Yeah. So, Billy gives Dawn a 357 Magnum after uh, she said she's never held a gun in her life, which is very, very dangerous to do. Yeah, it's it's a big jump. Yeah, people don't realize that, like, you don't really just, like, kind of pick up a gun and use it. It's no. kind of, you should probably know what you're doing. No, I seriously doubt it works that way. But uh, Dawn hears banging on the door, 
and one of the minions ends up breaking in and she shoots it a bunch of times but it just keeps coming and she screams and while this is all going on the phone is ringing and this is Henry and Billy trying to call her and they realize something must be wrong so they go over to her apartment only to find the gun on the floor and it's it's been used all the shots are, are shot and uh they know that they have to go look for her and uh, they have to go find the site that the ritual is going to take place on. And apparently it's in the Bronx. Yeah, off to the Bronx we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 80s Bronx? <laughs> yeah, 80s Hell Bronx. Hell yeah, that's a war zone. <laughs> <laughs> so they find the place <laughs> easily somehow. and uh, they're, I, I didn't understand how they even... Played. I guess they knew from like the historical records of whatever was going on. Oh, okay. okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, they find the place and they're attacked like as soon as they go in and uh, Billy's gun does nothing. But Henry's cross basically makes the thing fucking melt, right? (laughs) Yeah. So now they're both wielding crosses. Uh, Billy finally said that his his gun will not work in this situation. So uh, they like work their way through this chamber they eventually get to the main chamber and find Dawn strung up on that altar with Eva there. And uh, Isn't that cool how the uh, beginning and basically the end scene of the movie are bookended by, yeah. by, by the same imagery? Oh, yeah, in, yeah. Imagery, how it comes together. But I like how Billy walks in and he goes, drop the fucking knife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're attacked by the minions. And Billy stabs one with the... Uh, with the cross, but he's grabbed by another, but he knocks its head off <laughs> and it's like screaming with its head knocked off. Yeah. That definitely wasn't in the beginning. No, no, no. Was, this was a new, new wrinkle. So Billy shoots the knife out of Eva's hand. What a shot, right? Yeah. And she tries to make him kill himself like with the gun. She's like, Oh, just kill yourself. You can't stop it. Just like you couldn't stop your partner from killing himself. See? That's, oh. that's rough too. All these shots you're taking. Dude, all this shit is super fucking deep in this. Those are some deep scars, she gets, man. She gets in your head. She's psychologically tormenting you. So uh, he manages to break free of this and like shoots away from his head. And Henry throws the cross at her like a tomahawk. <laughs> and uh, this impales her. I felt more like a boomerang. Like, yeah, yeah <laughs> whatever. Right? Well, you just like the Mad Max 2. Yeah. You like the Road Warrior. Yeah, so. yeah that's a good, good point. Good point. <laughs> So uh, this ends up putting her down, sort of, and they untie Dawn, and they bring her outside, and Billy goes back in for Henry, who's, like, spreading gasoline around, <laughs> and he's attacked by Eva, and she's got the ring to his head, but Billy comes in just in time and cuts her ringed hand off with a knife. Damn. A little conveniently. It was cool, though. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. But they set the place on fire, but they don't take the ring, and uh, the building explodes. And Billy just keeps saying, like, no, it's done, man. It's over. It's over. And the reverend says, it's not over. <laughs> um, you you know that, there's, that this was going to keep going because they didn't go in, and he made that, like, point. Right, like he, oh, he, he made the point, but it also could have been like a wrestling type of ending to point where what you don't think is going to happen happens. Yeah, well, we see the ringed hand move in the fire. Yeah, it does move. Yeah, you're right. So we see, I guess it's like the next day or later that night or whenever, and Billy and Dawn are seen together, and Billy's in the shower, but the hand with the ring is in the bed with Dawn, and it basically alludes to the fact that she's attacked by this thing and killed. But so, so so many so many killing hand things in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. much of that. Uh when Billy comes running out, Dawn is Dawn's fine, but she's she's acting sort of off. She doesn't seem like her normal character. And Billy looks kind of put off by this and he says, "Oh, I heard you scream." And Dawn says like, "Oh, come back to bed." And you know, you're freezing, like, come back to bed, I'll warm you up, or whatever. And Billy kind of says, uh, like, oh, I I heard you scream in the shower, and I, I saw your face, and the hand was choking you to death. And we see her be like, oh, like, come here. 
And she goes to embrace him, but she's got the ring on and puts it over his head. <laughs> and the last scene we see is Eva, well, not Eva, but Dawn, dressed like Eva, walking out of the apartment building, smoking a cigarette. The yeah. freeze frames on the end, and that's that. Body transformation. You like that? I like that. That was good, right? I like, I like that body hopping at the end. I like that. <laughs> so, Mike, out of... Uh, well, first of all, what kind of movie would you say this is? It's... <clears throat> You see, I thought when I, after I watched it the second time, I thought it was like a, almost a cool like like biker revenge movie. If you take out the aspects of of the Satan and the way they bookend it, but I think now it's more of I want to say it's more of a supernatural movie again. Yeah, yeah, I like it. <clears throat> I really like that one. But uh, let's uh, let's get your opinion out of five. Satanic Japanese motorcycles. What do you give this? I think it's um three and a half for me. I give it a five out of five. You give it a five? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I love this movie. Wow, that's high praise. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, let's get to my favorite section, or I guess it's my favorite section. It's where I attempt to read the back of the box without fucking up. <laughs> that may be hard for you today. Okay, so... This one looks pretty long, so I hope it's not going to be uh, too hard for me. Um, Lusty Leanne Baker and Michael Conti, C O N T E, is that how you say that? Mm-hmm. Conti. Uh, take you down under to Necropolis in an action packed zombie thriller that makes Night of the Living Dead look like a slumber party. The streets in New York are nothing like Eva remembers them. In those good old days, witches like Eva were roasted at the stake, but that was 300 years ago. If it wasn't for her indestructible magic ring, she would never have been reincarnated to her new life as a leather-clad motorcycle-riding punkette. Punkette? Yeah, in the streets of modern-day New York City, the ring now belongs to a crusading black minister named Reverend Henry James. <laughs> Eva is on a mission along with her adoring cult of grotesque ghouls. Find the missing ring and sacrifice a young virgin to maintain her eternally youthful status. The problem isn't the ring, but where will she find a virgin in Manhattan? Ba 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 ba. <laughs> searching and slaughtering along her way Eva's one wicked witch a virgin is finally found but she won't be taken easily in the final battle the city erupts Necropolis is at war did you just read the screenplay? Like, geez, that's a mouthful yeah that was a lot man that was really hard for me Jesus I like this this is the I, who did this lightning video yeah the lightning video release do you, say, do you think that uh, accurately describes this film? Okay, I think it did more than enough I, th- I think it told the whole story yeah, of I the think film. It, yeah I think you don't have to even watch yeah, it yeah I think I, gave, think I gave too much yeah. you think so? a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was a lot but it, it really is uh, a good one. I recommend it. If you could buy it on DVD, Blu-ray, I would say buy it. I think it goes pretty cheap on uh, eBay. You could probably get a copy of it somehow. Uh, it's on YouTube, apparently. I know I saw it in another language. Maybe it was Italian. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next segment, and that is where we pick the movie for next week. We will spin the deal. Wait, what? Spin, spin, spin the, the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel and make the deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jake the Snake. All right. I feel like we have to watch that every time we do this segment. I, I just picture it in my head when I hear that. Uh, this makes me laugh. Him, him smiling, probably sitting there all drunk on pills. But he looks like he's like fucking 60 years old yeah, at this point. that's all right, though. Yeah, yeah. He's got a cool leather jacket on. Okay, so let's spin this wheel. Next week, we will be doing Nailgun Massacre. A peaceful town somewhere in America. I said, put that thing down! Well, what do you think? Up until the Nailgun Massacre. Well, you just pissed me off. A 
sheriff and the doctor are close on the killer's tail. And then another nail gun massacre happens. Dreadfully mutilated corpses line the killer's way. Uninhibited frenzy. Terry Lofton's neck in presenting gruesome situations has made him famous beyond the borders. A masterpiece that already has many followers in the USA. Nail Gun Massacre. Out now. Hell, just let me see if I use you in one of my movies again. Cool. <laughs> Have you ever seen this movie? Cool. I haven't. Seen no? No. I've uh, heard, heard good things about it. I remember it. you saying you wanted to see this. Yeah. I really, I really think the t shirt is sick that I saw. But yeah, our t shirt? I want to see the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah hell yeah, yeah, man. I want to see it. Yeah, join our, join our cult yeah. and buy the t shirt on our big cartel. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Nailgun Massacre is a, is a pretty fun slasher. Magnum videotape. I think it's pretty hard to find. Yeah, I want to get back into the slash around. Yeah, I want to find. Uh, we yeah, we've been too being yeah, we've been doing too much supernatural witch uh, spirits coming back from the past reincarnations. Back. I want to go back to the roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do some more slashers now, hopefully. Well, we got to go by the wheel, just so. <laughs> um, yeah, that's gonna be a good one. Uh, Mike, do you have anything uh, else? Oh wait, uh, more child's play stuff, right? Well, what about it? Did didn't they release something else? Did did they made an announcement to cancel it? Oh no no, maybe oh. I'm thinking of something else. I don't know. Oh no, I, I I didn't hear anything else. I mean, I think that that trailer was enough. Yeah, that was good. That, I I think people are fucking really hating on it. How could you not? I I don't know, man. And I I, I try to give things a chance, but not yeah, could you not? I know what you mean. And you know what? I can knock it because I'm gonna spend money to see it. Yeah. So well, I, I can knock it. It's gonna be no hills have eyes. No way. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Nothing could be that. No, nothing. I don't know. Maybe. It's, did, did, it's very hard. Did you watch Mandy yet? No. That 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 looks that looks very cool though. Did you have to watch yeah, that no, one? I'm Please, gonna, for I'm, my sake, you have to I'm watch. I'm gonna that watch one. it this week. Did you watch The Void? I haven't seen that either, no. Dude, two movies that you need to watch. Right, I'm going to definitely watch the Mandy one, though. Then I'm going to watch. Dude, The Void, you got to watch, too. Right. The ending of it I'm is watch The Beyond. Mandy first. I had to watch it for two weeks. Yeah, that's a really good one. I'm going to watch it. I mean, if you can watch fucking Technodrome over here, whatever the fuck we're watching. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then I'll, uh, Cyber Slam. Cyber Slam. I'll watch it, yeah. I'll yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, or else I'm gonna have to start picking like really terrible fucking movies for us to watch here. No, no, no. things that'll just make you want to kill yourself. No, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll watch the movie instead. I'll take the easier fate. I'll you'll, watch, you'll. I'll watch, <laughs> I'll watch, I'll watch Mandy. It's really not, dude. I loved it. That was my no, favorite cool. movie in a while. I wasn't gonna finish it, obviously, at that point, but it looked cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mike, do you have anything that you want to plug? Any uh, Anything you want to do? No, I don't want to plug anything right now. All right, all right. Well, I'll plug our uh, Instagram, at Bad Taste Video. Uh, see all our bullshit. Um, you can find our podcast on Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Please, on all these apps, five stars, whatever the highest is, please help us out here. Give us a good review. That'd really yeah, please, help us out. Please, review. Please and thank you. Yeah, especially if you're on the podcast network for uh, uh, the Apple iTunes podcast app. Five stars. Good review, please. Um, yeah, that should be it for this week. Anthony will be back next week. It is confirmed. Uh, we'll be doing Nail Gun Massacre. Uh, I'm Mike. I'm also Mike. And this has been a Bad Taste Video Bullshit Podcast. Bye. Bye.